Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while but I am back with another Let's Talk video. The last one on 2 Peter, because there are only three chapters in 2 Peter. Um, because this is the conclusion of the book, it'll be a little bit shorter than the other ones. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, 2 Peter 3, you know, it talks about the last days. and says there will be people in the last days speaking against God's words just because they haven't happened yet. Um, he says that in verse 3, he says, First, be aware of this. Scoffers will come in the last days to scoff, following their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they have been since the beginning of creation. So, you know, just because Paul thought he was living in the end of time, and just because Peter thought he was living in the end of time, and just because subsequent generations after them have believed they are living in the end of times, um, just because the world keeps going doesn't mean that God was wrong, or that Jesus was wrong, or that they were somehow lying. Uh, it just means that not all the circumstances were met for, for it to be the end. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've never really thought that as a sound argument, like, oh, they were wrong about it being the end of the world, so that means Jesus isn't going to come back. I, I don't think that displays much critical thinking of the scriptures, um, ironically, because they think it does. Um, you know, it doesn't discredit God or God's ultimate plan uh, just because the end of the world hasn't already happened. Um, moving on a little bit past that, uh, Peter does not preach deism. Uh, the example of the flood is proof that God is active in the affairs of mankind. Basically, what Peter is arguing um, is that there have been instances in the past where God has been active in the affairs of humans uh, in his plan, in his timing. So he brings up the example of the flood. He says... Uh, they ignore this. Long ago, the heavens and the earth existed out of water and through water by the word of God. Through these, the word of that time perished when it was flooded by water. So if God was not active, if God's plans weren't working, um, then he, nece he not, wouldn't necessarily have sent the flood uh, if he wasn't as active as these people claim that he isn't. Um, and certainly not if his plans had messed up, you know, just because, so for example, uh, you can make the same argument today, you know, Jesus hasn't come back already, so why doesn't God just wipe everything out and start over? Well, that's not how God operates, and also God's plan hasn't messed up, he just hasn't acted it out yet. Um, the current times are proof that even without God's direct interference, the world cannot and will not go on as it always has. Um, there has been so much change and turmoil going on in the world today. It's, it's clear proof that um, things are changing. Um, whether or not you think it's changing towards the end of the world, it's very evident that things are changing. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, God hasn't sent a flood. Um, God hasn't struck people down the way he did in the Old Testament. It doesn't mean God's not involved. And even if God's not directly involved in the world, it's it's still going on. Um, there's still a lot happening. There's still a lot going on. There's still a lot of things changing, um, with or without direct interference. So that's kind of what Peter was getting at in that section. Um, you know, the Lord never delays um, outside of what his plan is. You know, just because we don't understand his timing does not mean that he is flawed. An example of that, you could look at Joseph, you know. Joseph had these dreams as a really young person of his brothers and family bowing down to him um, in, like, sub subordinates. Um, but then it happened when he had the dream. It happened years later, after he was sold into slavery, imprisoned by Pharaoh, and freed by Pharaoh, and made second in command of all of Egypt. Only then, after all of that, that his family bowed down before him. So, you know, there were times when Joseph was in prison when I'm sure he was like, what is going on? Um, but God's timing is not our timing. His timing is not flawed. Um, we just may not always be able to understand his timing. So just because we can't understand it doesn't mean there's something wrong with it. 
It just means we have to have a little faith and know that, you know, God's going to work it out. You know, nothing is too big for God. You know, he's the creator of the universe. So there's, by definition, there can't be anything too big for him. Um, Peter says in verse 8, he says, Dear friends, don't let this one thing escape you. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. Um, so once again, you know, the Lord's timing is always perfect. It's always his timing. Um, God does not operate on our timeline. As C.S. Lewis said in Mere Christianity, God is outside of time. Uh, he operates outside of our timeline. He's not bound by the constraints that we have in a finite, one-dimensional time span. God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and be pr present at any moment that he wants. Um, which is why, to him... One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Because it literally could be for him. You know, God can do one thing in a 24 hour time span that we can't even imagine across millennia. He can do vice versa. Um, moving on, Peter says the, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, the elements would burn and be dissolved, and the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. The end of creation, as we know, will come uh, suddenly and without warning. You know, Jesus mentioned several times that he comes like a thief in the night. Um, the parable about tying up the thief if you catch him, or being prepared for the thief to come. Um, it's, it's unpredictable. It's unpredictable. The earth will end in fire, but we, the children of God, will have eternal life. Um, so even though the world may be destroyed, everything on it will be destroyed, uh, it, it'll literally be the end of creation as we know it. We have hope that we'll, we will reside with God for eternity. Um, so this is nothing to be concerned about, you know, the end of the world. Like, as bad as it gets, we're like, ah, oh, you know, it's not that bad. You know, it's, it's pretty bad, but it's not the worst. Um, you know, it's it's always comforting to know that as bad as life gets, no matter what life throws at you, we have hope, um, we have peace, and we have reassurance in an eternity spent with God. And that's something that we can hold on to as Christians. Whether it's thinking about the end of the world, or it's just, you know, the struggles and circumstances that we go through in life. So that's really encouraging. Uh, Peter's conclusion contains a warning to live without blemish and Live strong in the faith so as not to be led astray. It, it kind of echoes what he said in First Peter. You know, the devil's like a roaring lion uh, looking for those to devour. So we have to hold strong in the faith so that we can't be led astray by the devil. Um, so once again, you know, Second Peter and First Peter are both very encouraging books with a lot of stuff given to us on how to live as Christians in a world that is flawed, in a world with suffering, and a world with chaos. Um, so, so that's something that we can hold on to and, and have hope as Christians that, you know, it, it'll always get better eventually. Um, but yeah, so that was Second Peter. So we are done with the Peters. Um, moving on, I'm going to start doing Acts next. Uh, so I'll start with Acts 1 and then we'll, we'll go from there. So yeah, I've enjoyed doing First and Second Peter and I'm really looking forward to getting into Acts. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.